and welcome to another episode of my Learning Lightroom series. Now a common question asked by people who change over to shooting RAW is what the heck is going on? I thought RAW was supposed to be awesome and when I get them onto the computer they're rubbish comparing them to my old JPEG images. And you know something? They're right. When you set your camera to shoot JPEG the camera is doing a load of stuff for you. It's changing the sharpness, the colour, the contrast so it makes it so that right out of camera the image looks pretty good and can be shared or printed. Now that's okay but you don't have as much leeway in post-production because this, these processes are destructive and compressive. In other words they're throwing part of your image away. If any highlights are blown on a JPEG image they are history. On a RAW file you can rescue blown highlights and blocked up shadows because the information is still contained in the file. And you're relying on the camera manufacturers to consider what is good processing to arrive at a final JPEG. Well, I'm sorry, I'd rather do that. So that means that comparing the two is not really a fair comparison because the raw image has had no processing done on it at all. So to level the playing field, you need to do some processing on your raw file to make it look good. Now the good thing about Lightroom is that it's easy peasy to set up your default settings for each camera that you use. And you only need to do it once and then you forget about it and your raw images will pop. Okay let's start by looking at what default settings are. When you import an image into Lightroom some things happen by default in the develop module. So let's go and have a look. One of the most important is in the detail panel and it's the sharpening. I've got a couple of images here. Let's just have a quick look at this one. This is a raw file. And we can see here that there is some default sharpening that's added. And if I go up and we look in the basic panel, we'll see that everything really in the tone section is zeroed out. There's zero highlight correction, zero contrast, zero. All of these are just zero. So there's, there's nothing extra being added to this image. So this is a very neutral set of develop settings. So what's going to be better for you is to change some of these so the images come into Lightroom with some adjustments made to the sharpening, contrast, vibrance, so that your raw images look more like your JPEG ones. OK. So the first thing to understand is that these settings need to be specific to your camera. So well, why is this? Well, I've got a couple of images down here. Now, this first one here is one that I took on my iPhone. And let's take it up to fill and get it up to one to one. Now let's start down with sharpening. So we'll go down to the detail panel and we'll have a look in here. And we can see at the minute there is no sharpening by default. So let's add a little. So I can add a little bit of sharpening and you can see that it's having an effect on the image. But very quickly I've got really to too much sharpening. If I start going way way overboard it starts breaking up and if we go to two to one you can see that it looks even worse. You can see there's a load of artifacting and that's all too much sharpening. So really what I need to be looking at is something like maybe 50 maybe as a maximum. Any more and it's just too much. Now sharpening a JPEG like this is way over the top because it's already been sharpened by the camera. Now let's have a look at a high res image. And here we can see, we'll just zoom back out just to show you the picture and then we'll zoom back in and just pick an area that's got quite a bit of detail in it. And that's two to one, let's go back to one to one. So we'll leave it about there. And we can see that there is a little bit of sharpening that's been added by default. But it's not a lot. So we're losing out on a lot of the pop that we could get from this image. So if I now move the sharpening slider up, you'll soon see that having to effect. And for me, I'm going to somewhere like just over 100. Gives me a good amount of sharpening for this image. You see that's a lot different to with the iPhone picture which was topping out at around 50. So just over 100 looks about the right amount of sharpening for this image. So sharpening for a camera phone is totally different to that for a high resolution image. 
And the same is true for all the other settings, such as vibrance, contrast, etc. So we really need to make sure that when we import a photo from a camera phone, for example, it doesn't have the same settings that a high res image does from a DSLR. So we need to be able to make the settings specific to the camera that created the image. So how can we do that? Well, to set this up, we're going to go into Preferences. So we're going to go to Edit and Preferences. If you're on a Mac, it'll be Lightroom and Preferences. And in the Presets tab here, we've got a little tick that if it's not ticked, then it needs ticking to say Make Default Specific to Camera Serial Number. Now just a note here that these are preferences. So the settings are going to be applied to everything that you bring in to all catalogues. If you want something more specific to a specific catalogue, then you'll need to set up a develop preset and apply that on import. Okay, we just make sure that they are going to be specific to your camera. We do that by making sure there's a tick in this make default specific to the camera serial number. When we've done that, we can come out of there. Now what you need to do is to spend a little bit of time and review some of your photos from each of your different types of camera and come up with what you consider to be a set of adjustments that are relevant for each individual camera. And what they'll do, they won't work for all photos, but what you can do is you can get them to work for most photos. Now so down here I've got a picture from my iPhone and one from my 5D Mark II. So let's Let's imagine that these are the ones that I think are representative. So let's start with the iPhone and I'm going to play around a little bit now. So let's start with a bit of sharpening and as before I think around the 50 is about the sharpening that I will need for most of the images that come in from the iPhone. I'll go back up and I'll have a look in my basic panel and I may want to add a little bit of clarity and a little bit of vibrance. Now I use vibrance rather than saturation because saturation increases the intensity of all the colours, even those that are already saturated. So it can often lead to those becoming oversaturated. Vibrance targets those colours already not saturated. So it's a more subtle adjustment. And I may want to add a little bit of contrast. Just a tad. So remember, take your time with this. Examine a few images and make notes of what adjustments work for most images and come up with a standard set. Now to help me to assess this, what I do is I press the Y key. And what this does is gives me a before and after view. So here I can see visually whether I'm going in the right direction. And I think I am. I think it's a lot clearer. I've got a little boost in the saturation and I think that's good to go. I'll just press the Y key again to get me back to single view. Now once you've done that we're going to go up to develop and set default settings. And that's going to bring you this dialog box up and basically it's just asking you right that's the format the JPEG it's the Apple and it's the iPhone 5s. Now do you want to update to current settings? So what this is going to do is take the settings that we've already done in here and make them the default settings. So any image that gets imported from that device will get those settings applied to it. And in this case, yes, I do. So I'm going to click update. Right, OK, let's go and have a look at my high res image. So I'll click on that one. And again, we'll have a quick look at this. I'll press the Y key and we can zoom out and zoom back in get an area that we think we're happy with, something like that. And we've already done a little bit of uh, sharpening, so I'll go back to my detail panel and just say yeah, about 100 I think is good on that. Go back up to the basic panel and maybe add a little bit of clarity, a little bit of vibrance and possibly a tad of contrast, something like that. So I can see a difference. I like this one better. If we zoom out, maybe a little bit more vibrance, just to warm it up a little bit. Yep, I think that's good. So now I'm going to go back up to develop, set default settings. But this time it realises that it's my 5D Mark II with this serial number. And I'm going to click 
update to current settings. So now anything that's brought in from the 5D Mark II will have those settings applied to it. So that's how easy it is to set up your default settings in Lightroom. Now this will make a big difference for those of you who have recently switched over to shooting RAW from JPEG or if you already shoot RAW and you didn't know about this. It should really take your post-processing time down. So that's it. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel where there are many more free resources. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.